सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर खरवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्त मा विदिषावह ओ शांति 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 साइरम एवरीवन As you all know, uh, we are covering the Bhajagovindam verses of Sri Adi Shankar Acharya, uh, on which Swami had delivered discourses during the 1973 summer showers. Uh, so far, we have looked at ten verses. The order in which we are studying them is the same order in which Swami had picked them up for giving discourses on. as uh, today we are picking up the 11th verse um which happens to be the 25th verse in the bajogovindam text um so we will look at the verse sayra shatrau mitre putre बंधव मा कुरु यत्नम विग्रह संधव सर्वस्मिन्नपि पश्यात्मानम सर्वत्रो सृज भेदा ज्ञान शत्रौ मित्रे पुत्रे बंधव मा कुर यत्न विग्रह संधव सर्वस्मी पश्यात्मात्सृज भेद ज्ञान शत्रौ मित्रे पुत्रे बंधव मा कुर यत्न विग्रह संधव सर्वस्मी पश्यात्मात्सृज भेद ज्ञान सो लेट्स लुक एट एनी लेटर्स विच यू आर पे अटेंशन फॉर इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रोनाउंसिएशन द फर्स्ट लाइन देर आर नो देर द फर्स्ट थ्री वर्ड्स देर आर नो एस्पिरेटेड कॉन्सनट in the last word bandhav the dh which is the last letter is an aspirated consonant because it's the fourth letter in the th varga so dh is the way it should be pronounced so it's bandhav okay um in the same way the last letter in the second uh, line also has to be uh, changed the same way sandhav okay dhau with aspiration uh, th- the third line does not have any aspirated consonants so when you look at the fourth line this letter this b which is also aspirated uh, with extra r it happens to be the fourth letter in the pa vargo pa class of consonants so b the gnana bhay in english you know we put an h there to show that that's an aspirated consonant the so bh okay so now uh, let's look at the word split word split to see the individual words where there are some words which are joined together and so we are going to split them in the first line 
there are no sandhis which cause any change to the letter so as you can see all the words are the same there are four words shatra mitre putre and bandha they are all separate words in the second line actually there are only four words but i have just put a dash here just to show that within that word even though it's not a sandhi it's a, it's called a samasa two words coming together uh, just so that we understand the meanings i have put a dash between vigraha and sandhav in the next line sarvasmin api when it split it is sarvasmin and api um as you can see here what happens in some sandhis some of the letters get duplicated okay so some of the letter so as you can see this in gets duplicated as in in and that one of the second hands join a and it becomes na okay it's a bit of a complicated sandhi so in some sandhis some of the letters get duplicated and this is one example of that uh, it's called dvitva that means duplication okay it becomes two so that's how you get an extra n and that extra n plus r becomes na so that's how you get sarvasmin na p okay but when you split it it is sarvasmin with one n and a p okay that's a sandhi in the next word pashyatmanam there are two words pashya and atmanam the y plus r becomes ya so that's you get pashyatmanam but it's individually split it's pashya and atmanam so there's so sandhi in the fourth line also there are some sandhis okay the first let word is sarv sarvatrot suja It's, it's composed of two words sarvatra and utsrija the tra and u becomes tro okay a plus u always becomes o so here in this case it becomes tra plus u becomes tro sarvatro utsrija when it split it is sarvatra and utsrija the next the fourth uh, so the next word is be bheda jnanam is comprised of two words bheda and ajnana okay bheda ajnana means bheda ajnana actually it is um, uh, the plus a plus the plus a becomes da longer okay so those are the sandhis now let's look at the word to word meaning the first word is shatrav shatrav um, the simple noun for that is shatru shatru means an enemy shatru is enemy so shatrav is the seventh vibhakti or the seventh noun form of the word shatru that means in the enemy okay so in the enemy is shatra the second word is mitre so mitre is sort of seventh noun form of the simple noun mitra mitra means friend okay mitre um you can also um okay i will come back mitre means in a friend it also can be said in friendship that way also you can take the meaning here you can say in enmity okay that way also uh, the meaning could be taken in enmity and in friendship okay then in the next one it's putre putre is also seventh noun form 
or seventh vibhakti of the simple noun putraha. Putraha means son. Okay. Putre means I have said in a son or in children also you can say. Okay, in children. The last, the fourth word is bandhav. It is the fourth, last word in the first line. Bandhav means it's a seventh noun form of the word bandhu. It's saptami bhakti or seventh bhakti of the word bandhu. Bandhu means a relative, someone who is related to ourselves. So bandhav means in a relative or in relationships can take it that way also. Okay. So in enmity or with, as as it regards a enemy or as it regards a friend, as regards a child, as regards your relatives, we'll go to the second line, which is ma means don't. Ma means don't. Ma guru. Ma guru means don't do it. Okay. Don't do it is ma guru. What do you want? What should you not do? Yatnam. Yatnam is effort. Uh, yatnam by itself is effort. Prayatnam is also another word which, which gets commonly used by us. Prayatnam means all kinds of efforts. Yatnam means just effort. Okay. What, what effort you should not do? Vigraha Sandhav. Vigraha means, graha means to hold. Vigraha means to push someone away. Okay, not holding. Sandhav means sandhi. Comes word sandhi. So it becomes joining. Okay. So you should not join and separate. You know, some you with whom you join, some with whom you distance yourself. Don't do that effort. It's a, uh, first two lines are saying that is among friends, among enemies, among your children, or among relatives, or uh, across all of them. Don't do unnecessary close, very very close association, or keeping them at a distance. Don't do that. Is the uh, first two lines. Then the verse says, "Sarvasmin." Okay, sarvasmin means in everyone. Okay, in everyone. Api also. Sarvasmin api and that also in everyone. Pashya. Pashya is an instruction. Okay, do something. You know? Pashya means see. Okay, see in everyone also atmanam. The self. So it means it uh, this the self can also mean see yourself in everyone. Don't only if you see yourself as somebody, the same way you see everyone else also. Sarvasminapi Pashyatmana Pashya Atmana. You see yourself in everyone. Is one way to say. You can say you see God also in everyone. Just the way you should see God within you also. Okay, Sarvasmin Napi Pasha Atman. And then the next line is Sarvatra. That means everywhere, in every in every place. Sarvatra means everywhere. Or in all situations. You okay? can you can say that way also. Utsrija. Utsrija means to give up. A simple way, I would say, give up. Everywhere you should give up. What do you have to give up? Bheda. Bheda means differences. Bheda, which comes out of ajnanam, ignorance. Thinking that somebody else is separate from us or they are different compared to us is due to ignorance, is what the verse says. So whether it's enemy, whether it's friend, whether it's child, whether it's relatives, 
don't separate them as somebody else don't differentiate too much vikra samdha means don't attach yourself too much don't run away from them also don't keep them away that kind of meaning and everywhere see yourself in everyone you see yourself and in everywhere give up all bheda differentiation in english in today's world we say discri- don't discriminate don't apply discrimination of a negative type a negative type of discrimination don't engage in that that's what the verse says <clears throat> so i uh, will cover the meaning uh, we will see what swami how swami explained this uh, for the rest of the session we will li- read swami's discourse which is the 16th discourse from the summer showers of 1973 um the discourse here is actually a full transcription of the audio of the fi- audio of the discourse because the some i have a uh, volunteer a student in the class who have volunteered to transcribe and give so i have used that okay if you read the discourse you may not see the words exactly as they are but this is a transcription of the discourse audio version of the discourse so it's full full discourse um, so we'll go through that to think that someone some are your enemies some are your friends some are your children some are your relations and to develop attachment or dislike towards them is not correct see the one atma in them all give up illusion and ignorance okay in this world we call some people our friends some people our relations and children these relationships are only between various bodies and we give such names to such bodily relationships in this body of ours there are many organs we give different names to those organs we call one leg something else an eye something else a nose another a mouth hand by giving such names we experience various organs of our body it becomes very clear to us that the name and form relate only to the body they do not in any manner relate to the atma but we are not mistaking one for another we are not giving a different name to one organ we are not trying to experience anything in a manner contrary to its own nature if there's a need that arises for performing some surgical operation to any one of our limbs we begin to hesitate greatly and think for some time in such a context we do not undertake to either hate or abuse any one particular organ or praise one particular organ we have the same attachment affection to all organs we wish them to be safe so the body by its entirety can be in safe condition in the same manner our vedanta teaches us we should develop equal mindedness in all people we may ask why we should develop equal mindedness to all from time immemorial it has been customary and it is a fault in this custom that we begin to like things whom we like and we dislike people who are against us this has become customary with us in order to understand this there is a possibility of our accepting a very good ideal in our life our teeth accidentally bite the tongue 
when this happens we do not punish the teeth or speak soft words to the tongue we will not address the teeth and say you harsh teeth you have been very harsh on the tongue a soft one we don't accuse the teeth like that no do we go and tell the tongue that it has been careless and therefore it is subjected itself to this harm what is the reason for this the reason is we regard both the tongue and the teeth as belonging to us as being under our control we are responsible for the safety of both we feel both of them are ours then we come to the feeling that it is our carelessness that has resulted in tongue being harmed by the teeth we will never undertake in those circumstances to punish either the tongue or the teeth because such an incident has come about by some accident that is how we will regard it we will take care in future but we are not going to punish these organs we have to regard that all the large number of people who are present in this infinite world as the organs in the body of atma these organs which are present in this world wide atma they cannot hate each other they cannot discuss or comment on each other each one cannot be proud about himself and bring down the other when one organ of the body hurts another organ the body we bear this with great patience in the same manner one individual hurts another individual they have to bear it up with great patience this so called relationship we see the friendship that we see the attachment that we see between two people is something that comes about only between one body and the other body these things do not at all come in relation to one atma to another atma this is expressed by asking the questions who is a friend who is enemy who is the teacher who is the student who is the writer who is the actor who is god and who is the disciple have we got the capacity to find out who is what if we have not got the capacity to distinguish and find out what is wrong in calling you as bad as a monkey this teacher this friend this actor and so on are only different in their names and in their forms but in all of them atma that is present is one and the same the presence of atma in all these different names and forms is establishing the oneness that is present in them in this the nature of man is a mixture of two distinct things mishrama swarupa what we call human nature is always a mixture of two things it could be regarded as a mixture of atma and what is contrary to the atma or anatma it could also be regarded as kshetra and kshetragnya it could also be regarded as prakriti and paramatma sthira and chara in these words when we make an attempt to distinguish them and discriminate between the two words that are being used then it will become evident to you what is truth and what is permanent some people argue that if there is no abode kshetra then there is no question of someone residing in that abode kshetra jnya some others argue if there is not someone residing in the abode then there is no question of the abode being there but when we make a proper inquiry we will find that if kshetragnya the divine person who is living there is not there then there is no question of the of kshetra existing at all when we clearly understand that a word signifies what it denotes and the existence of 
what the word denotes is it precedes the occurrence of the word then we can see looking at these two words kshetra and kshetragnya here the words kshetra ha has two aksharas kshetragnya has three aksharas kshetra has an extra kshetragnya sorry Sorry. Kshetra Gnya has an extra akshara, Nya. Nya stands for Jnana. Jnana Swarupa or the Divine. Without Kshetra Gnya, there can be no Kshetra. Kshetra is contained in Kshetra Gnya. That which has Jnana is Kshetra Gnya. That which has no Jnana is Kshetra. This means that what is the embodiment of jnana the jnana swarupa he is the jiva he is residing as god is residing in the body he is living in the body without the jnana swarupa the body is lifeless and it is as good as not existing according to our vedanta we understand that this jnana swarupa has made a temple of our body Our Vedanta says that our body is the temple in which God is residing. Jnana Swarupa is Jiva. Deha is without Jnana. Deha is Mandiramu, means temple. Jivudu is a Deva. Jiva is Deva. Our Vedanta says Deho Devalaya Proktaha Jivo Devalaya. Jeevo Deva Sanatanaha. In the other pair of words which have been used for explaining the mixture of human character, Sthira, something which is permanent, and Chara, something which moves, nature, Prakriti is all the time moving about. Paramatma is stationary, fixed, and permanent, or Sthira. What keeps on changing is the world. what does not keep changing is paramatma or jagadishwara in our indian experience there is an analogy which comes from the domestic grinding device this consists of two circular pieces of stone the stone that is below is stationary while that which is above keeps on moving ihamun sukhimpa hema taraka vidya this jiva the spirit in you he gets sold of what is called hema taraka vidya that is vidya which concerns itself with the world around us and he keeps on revolving the world around you round and round in the center of the stone there is a small hole which we may call the objective if you put grain in that hole then whatever goes away from the center that gets converted into powder but such grain which keeps close to the center does not get converted and remains as grain this means that one who has god in his mind and makes an attempt to keep close to god he remains unchanged but for one who goes uh, goes away from divinity he gets powdered and becomes flour when we therefore make a proper inquiry about the aspect of our human body we will come to know that it is something which constantly changes it is not something which will remain unchanged there's nothing great which you can achieve with man's body however only a limited only to a limited extent with the help of your mind and buddhi 
you can move forward a little extent in this world, but not more than that. It's because we attach the importance, attach importance to the body, which is inherently useless. We are not able to recognize our own sacredness, our own state, our own destination. The skin of a dead animal has some value, but a dead body of a human being has no value at all. Young people have to recognize that it is not a proper attitude for human beings to take by which they give so much attachment to this human body, which really is useless, and at the same time do not give necessary importance to sacred ideas and to the sacred nature of the divine. Students, I do not mean to tell you that you should be careless about your body and that you should not care for its proper upkeep, that you should not look after its health. I am not so saying. We have so many different kinds of carriages for transporting us. We have a cycle, a car, a scooter, a motorcycle, a bus, a bullock cart, and so on. And it's necessary every day as a routine for us to look after these things and put some oil and petrol when needed and keep them in good working condition. This is Kartavya Dharma. In the same manner, our body is like a chariot for us. In the same manner, as we look after our cycle or car and give it the necessary petrol and oil, we have to take care of this body, which is the carriage to take us through the journey of our life. We have to give it the necessary amount of food and keep it in a good condition. That is all. Instead of keeping it in good condition and using it as a carriage for the journey of life, if you spend all your time in polishing it, in giving it unnecessary decoration and making its appearance an attractive one. What is the purpose in having such a chariot? There's one other thing which we have to bear in mind. If we sit in a car and drive the car and simply go on the road without knowing where we have to go, you will undergo some difficulties. If you drive our car to places where there are no roads, or try to go on hills, or drive it into a river, then we will subject ourselves to many difficulties. In the same manner, if we undertake to send the chariot of this body along paths, along which we should not go, or take it to destinations and places to which we are forbidden to, forbidden to go, then we will certainly be submitted to various kinds of abuses and various kinds of disrespect. Just as when you get your car stuck up in mud, you will need the help of so many people to get the car out of mud. So also, if you get the chariot of your life stuck in the mud of a family, then you will need the help of so many people of satsang, the help of people who have experienced to get their life out of that family. In this manner, the chariot of our body has to be looked after very carefully and so that it is not subject to, subjected to harm. It can reach the sacred destination which it has to reach. We have to give it the necessary care, but bear in mind the object, the end where you have to take this body, otherwise you will get into trouble. Today, we are not taking this body, our chariot, along the correct path. On the other hand, we are taking this body along some crooked paths. And that is the reason why we are getting into many difficulties. Not only are we getting into difficulties, we are even losing and spoiling some of the parts which make up this car or this body. 80% of the people who constitute these human cars which have been described, they are spoiling by taking to crooked parts, various parts that compose the human body. Out of the rest of 20%, 15% them, of them are keeping their bodies as if they are cards which have to be kept in a showroom.
they are being decorated so that they may look very well to look at they eat well and they are worse than animals in so far as dressing themselves and making an appearance and show if there is a car which is made as a car and is intended to help those who wish to travel in that car and if it's not going to help people who want to travel in that car then we will have to regard it simply as a mass of iron and not a car one who wants to live in this world should he should first become a human being he who goes on praising everything else in an undeserved manner is a useless fellow to know the nature of brahman is the best of learning that you can get here that is the royal road to understand things and get on this world we should therefore regard this body as a chariot and no more than that and we should see that we do not get into any trouble all other things relate only to you were realizing where you have come from the brahman from which you have come and you must use the chariot for the purpose of reaching again brahman the goal from where you have yourself come it is having such people who are given to luxury in mind the disciples of shankara have taught in this particular verse the need for sacrifice the need for sacred ideas and the need for understanding divinity this body has no importance the divine atma that lives in the body has the only has the only importance the body is made up of five elements and the body is therefore sure to die but the one permanent jivatma that lives in the body is the one thing which will not die and that is referred to as god himself that's the reason why the disciples of shankara have asked such questions of human beings who are friends who are enemies who are sons who are not related to us by asking such questions they have done the sacred task of explaining to human beings what is the essential thing what is the essential thing is which lives in this body bliss is the important destination for man we ask ourselves where are this bliss is how does one reach this place of bliss and what should we do to attain this the answer has been given by the disciples of shankara they said that this place is to be found in children and people who are in ecstasy that is who have lost knowledge of their surroundings this equality recognition of the fact that in childhood and in elders who are in ecstasy there exists this bliss has been taught to us but as we grow us as we grow as we become older and older we are getting attached more and more to these sensuous desires we are not thinking even for a little while about the bliss that is contained in our childhood christ also said once that bliss ananda is playing around the tender cheeks of children in which there are no teeth such children often show this bliss the bliss and happiness which a child experiences is something which has no parallel in any other situation which we can find in this world for example if a mother is carrying a child in her hands and walking forward from behind if you look at the child the child look at looks at you and laughs and creates such an ecstasy in you that you also would laugh the children have got this extraordinary quality and bliss in them that they can make elders also feel happy the reason for this is that these children are under no illusion about the importance of their bodies they have no deha bhranti we elders because we are so much immersed in our body our own body and various things that are involving the body 
that even if there is a situation where we have to laugh, we are unable to laugh. We have only some kind of pretentious laugh, which is something which we see in cinemas. It is in this context that in the Bhagavad Gita, it has been said that one who laughs is Narayana and one who cries is Nara, man. When Nara represented by Arjuna was crying in a despondent mood, Narayana represented by Krishna was at ease and freely, sorry, laughing. Sorry, freely laughing even in the battlefield. When we when do we laugh? We laugh only when we are happy. When we are happy, we are not we not only laugh, but also try to sing some songs. Those who have got a sweet voice will sing in public. Those who do not have a sweet voice will at least sing in the bathroom. Krishna had a sweet voice and perfect knowledge of raga, musical tune and Tala rhythm and so he was singing the Gita even in the battlefield. The word Gita means song. Amidst many difficulties in the battlefield that Krishna could sing and give us the Gita. It is a lesson to us and we will have to ourselves be prepared to be in happiness to receive this song of the Lord. Young students, Pavitratma Swarupas. You must have your body in good condition. You must not neglect the aspects of strength and health for your body. But you must use your body for the sake of your country, for establishing dharma and truth. You must remember that Indian culture of which you are the custodians, you should take great care and establish it and maintain it in future. You must devote your bodies we should be strong and healthy for this purpose. Not only that, you should carry with you sacred minds. I do hope that you'll be able to perform these functions. So that's Swami's uh, discourse uh, number 16 from the Samashavas of 1973. Um, as you can see, um, some of the text is very colloquial as if you know, Swami is speaking. Uh, because this is a direct transcription of the discourse audio version. Uh, you also can read the summarized uh, version on the summer showers online. So I will stop here. If there are any questions, we can discuss. Um, I think it's very, very clear. Swami has explained the meaning and the, the way we had to practice it. And all the inner hidden meanings also of this verse, Swami has nicely brought out. Um, I think that should be reasonably clear to everyone. Stop here. I guess there are no questions, which is a good thing. So we'll just read maybe once more the words and then we can call it, we can close the session if there are no questions. Shatrav mitre putre bandhav makuri yatnam vigraha sandhav sarvasminnapi pasyatmanam sarvatrotsrija bheda jnanam Shatrav mitre putre bandhav makuri yatnam vigraha sandhav Sarvasminnapi Pashyatmanam Sarvatrotsrija Bheda Jnan Shatrav Mitre Putre Bandhav Makur Yatnam Vigraha Sandhav Sarvasminnapi Pashyatmanam Sarvatrotsrija Bheda Jnan Sairam everyone. So I think uh, it's... Oh, yes, sister. 
question, brother. You know, the one of the, the discourse, in the discourse, Swami says some of the places, you know, you just... Um, you don't talk you don't you don't say anything you, you take it as once you get hurt also uh, you think as um it's uh, some uh, how the organs get hurt how we uh, tolerate that you have to tolerate so where the people uh, then where you communicate the right thing so where the communication goes like uh, how we learn from each other so if you don't say anything so Yes, sometimes they are not ready to receive whatever you are going to say. Also, they are not going to uh, receive it properly. But you mean that uh, we have to be always forgo anything, just not look at it and go, kind of? So I think you are talking about the teeth and the tongue, sister. Yes. So Swami says, you neither scold the teeth nor you scold the tongue or pacify it. Yes. Okay. Because, see, what happens is, why you do, why don't you do that? Because, you know, there's not, no, no use in telling the teeth anything. No use in telling the tongue anything. And they will all recover soon. And maybe uh, you will exercise. If you have been the cause of something, then you had to fix ourselves. We had to fix ourselves. Uh, so the same way Swami says in this world, when even somebody harms the other person, which is what you are saying. Yeah. Is it our duty to go and advise them? Yeah, okay. not, not to advise, at least to say them anything. So if they already know it, there's no need for anyone to tell. If they don't know, they may not even understand. But if somebody asks for our help or guidance, then we can share. See, one of the problems I think in this world, everyone tries to fix everything else. Um, not fixing themselves. Not fixing. See, um, anyway, maybe just as a side. See, there are two, there are two wars, two major things which every, in the news is there every day. The Ukraine Russia war or something which happens between Gaza in Gaza between Israel and Palestinians is a problem which has to be solved. Um, so there is so much. Talking about it, there are so much problems happening around the world. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, we should uh, attempt to fix the problem. But the thing is, who has to fix the problem also matters. Um, so, sometimes when we try to fix it, I think we try to fix it thinking, uh, that we have to do it also. Okay, then I think then the, the question comes, you will say, if somebody is making a mistake, somebody has to speak up. I think that's what you are referring to. Yeah. But how we speak up should not be with um, anger, hatred, or undue attachment with one thing. I think that's all matters. If you, if you have to say, you will say where I think, that's the way I understand. You will say wherever it is needed, you say it. Wherever you think there should be some change, there you can say. There's no point in talking to a teeth and say, don't bite the tongue. Okay. okay. The teeth will bite. But if we keep on standing in front of the mirror and looking at the teeth and saying it's, it's not of any use. So sometimes silence is the best. One needs to know where one can. As I think there's a famous prayer, you know, Oh Lord, there are things in this world which I cannot change. And there are things in this world I can change. Please let me know which one is which. So what you can change, you can change. What you cannot change, you cannot change. And beyond all this, the best is prayer. Okay. This is the way I understand. Okay. Great. Because, Great. see, one of the problems when we try to correct the world, we forget to see what mistakes we make also by looking at somebody else and trying to fix it. Okay. And like a very good example. I think, you know, people, Swami will say, Bhishma, you know, people didn't speak up when there's a problem. Yeah. There's a nice story which Swami has told. I think there's time, so I will say. 
Swami, somewhere Swami asks, what is dharma and what should we do? Swami tells a story. There was a washerman in some village. And he used to go collect clothes, come and wash every day. And um, so what he had done was he, in his house, he used to have a dog, uh, which used to guard. So what happens, he will go collect the clothes. He uses, he used to use a donkey, two donkeys he used to use. So he puts the, collects the clothes, ties them up, puts them on the donkeys and bring them home and wash the clothes and put them for drying. And then when they dry overnight, he's sleeping and the dog used to guard the place. And once he had collected some expensive clothes from some function and brought home and it was a very heavy day. Uh, so he washed and we put them to dry and he was so tired he fell asleep. That day for some reason the dog which used to guard also had fallen asleep and some thieves came. And uh, the donkeys were awake. The donkeys realized that uh, the thieves have come. Uh, and it all, they also realized that the dog is sleeping. The, so the donkey started braying apparently. Okay. They bray, if the dog barked, the thieves will run away. When the donkeys bark, the thieves don't run away. The, the thieves were stealing. So donkeys were barking more and more. Apparently the washerman got up and took a stick and beat the donkeys up nicely. Okay. Because he said, you are disturbing my sleep. So Swami says, a donkey should know what its job. The donkey should not become a dog. So that means we, I think all of us should know what is our role in this society, what is the place we are, and accordingly speak up. If you are a dog, we can speak. If you are a donkey, it's better to keep silent. Thank you. So this, is a, this is a story told by Swami. So we should all know what each of our role in the society and accordingly we should act. Uh, we should not become something else which we are not and do somebody else's job. Uh, I think that's the story. So I think knowing, having that knowledge itself is a big thing. But in this world today, everyone thinks they are the president of a country. They are the prime minister of a country and, you know, have everyone has an opinion. And opinions don't help. Uh, if we do what we have been alerted in this world properly, that will take care of everything else. So we should know our role, our kartavyam, our duty. If we are neglecting our own duty, then it's a problem. Uh, I think that's a problem. I will stop here. Um, I, Auntie Saku, sorry, you have. Yes, I am. Uh, when it comes to small children and you have to guide them and sh show them the right path, that is okay. But when you are mingling around the adults, we may think something that we have an opinion and we think that is right. It is not always right. If so Baba says, do not try to correct others. You become a role model with your own self by practicing the right values and uh, uh, with all the values Baba has taught. He says, you become that. Then you, your action should show them. When you go to preach anyone, they will get not a positive reaction, it's a negative reaction. Because it's all people are different. Who is she to come and tell us? That kind of an egoistic attitude will develop. So correcting the small children is your duty. But it is not your duty to think 
that your opinion is the right one and you have to tell the others that what your opinion is right. Thank you, Saira. Saira, thank you very much. So I think... Uh, oh. I know, brother, I don't know. I know it's very late to ask this question because I started late uh, looking. I know, I don't know, for some reason you brought this up. Maybe Baba wanted me to hear from you how to recite the mantra. The last line, I mean, you, I, can you just explain me? I know you say sarvato, sarvatro, right? That's everywhere in your, but then everywhere, then the next one, next word is uts, utsarja, right? Utsarja. Utsarja. Utsraja. So everywhere, I mean, I'm looking at the meaning everywhere, give up. Veda, Veda, Veda Jnanam, right? Veda Jnanam. Veda Ajnanam. Oh, Agni, oh, oh, I sorry. Okay, Ajnanam. Veda, Veda and Ajnanam. So give up the ignorance of differencing, finding differences. Oh, give up differences and ignorance. Yeah, okay, that's what it meant. But then I, I now I got it because then all his discourses is actually talking about that in yes, clearly. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank don't you. don't differentiate. Don't discriminate. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. I I, I didn't see that. Oh, there is a A there. Okay. So okay. You know, for here, I think I've shown in the second page whether Bheda and Ajnana. Ajnana. So okay. Bheda and Ajnana. So Bheda and Ajnana. So Bheda Ajnana. Yeah, I was thinking Veda Jnanam. I was getting confused. What that is? Oh, there is Ajnanam. Okay, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Uncle. Just going back to that tongue and the um, teeth. So does that mean like if we do a mistake that harms somebody else, like we shouldn't be really blaming ourselves or, or like we should consider that we are all part of one entity or something like that? I, I think this Swami has explained, you know, so for example, I think if we have done something wrong, um, we should know what we have done wrong and next time we don't repeat. I think that's, that's what the Swami says in the discourse, if I remember. See? Because such an incident has come about by some accident. That is how we will regard it. We will take care in the future. So if, if we were careless, for example, uh, recognize that we have been careless and make sure that we will try not to care, uh, be careless next time. Swami says even having too much guilt is a problem, you know. Because you are you are dwelling on the past too much. Um, you recognize what it is. Repent. You know, I, I I should not have done this. Then we, the next time we do. So that's why Swami does not like us calling ourselves sinners. Also, he will say we are all uh, lucky because we could have been sin only because of ignorance. Uh, ignorance, carelessness is just ignorance. Uh, we were not aware of something, we were not uh, uh, careful. So once we know that, next time you take care. I think that's what Swami would say. Uh, no need to be, feel undue guilt. Uh, guilt has to be right away assuaged by repentance. And if we can make amends, and if not, next time don't repeat. Uh, I think that's my understanding. <laughs> I hope I have. It, you know, everyone can have a different interpretation, but based on the discourse, that's what I understood. So I think we'll close the session with some Mr. Luka. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.